Well, welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. We're back with my friend Randy Alcorn. We're talking a lot about some of the things that Randy has written on extensively. It's a great blessing to be in this chair asking you questions and learning with everybody else about some real truth from God's Word. So last time we talked a little bit about do people in heaven know what's happening on earth right now? So they're in a heaven in that sense. But when we talk about heaven, we talk about it in an eternal sense. So how would you answer the question if somebody wanted to know where is heaven? Well, interestingly, there are, are two different answers uh, to this. One is when somebody dies right now that loves Jesus, they go home to be with the Lord. We're told in Scripture to be absent from the bodies, to be home with the Lord. Uh, Paul says in Philippians 1, it's better by far to die and be with Christ. No soul sleep immediately in his presence. So that's the present heaven. But that's because the resurrection hasn't happened yet. Christ has not returned. He has not set up his kingdom. We don't live on the new earth, which scripture says we will. So no matter what your beliefs about the timing uh, or the nature of the millennium, everybody who believes scripture should believe that we're going to spend eternity on the new earth as resurrected beings. So. The present heaven is one thing, but the future heaven, if heaven is the place where God dwells, God's everywhere present, yes, but he has a special dwelling place, well then that heaven is going to be relocated. We're told in Revelation 21, verse 3, in fact, three times in one verse, we're told that God himself will come down from heaven to the new earth to dwell with his people. Well, that means heaven's going to be relocated. The central presence of God, his dwelling place, will be on the new earth. And think of Jesus, the king of kings who will rule the new earth. Uh, he is incarnate, forever incarnate. Emmanuel, God with us. He will be with us forever on the new earth. So that will be the future location. The answer to the question of where is heaven is right now, it's outside of our physical earthly existence somewhere out there, but eventually it will be in the new heavens and the new earth, in the new Jerusalem, God dwelling on a redeemed earth. Okay, so in effect, heaven will be on the new earth one day. It's not this place we go to, it, it's a recreation. There's also that intermediate heaven, I wouldn't call it intermediate, but the millennial reign where there is God dwelling on this present earth, not fully made new yet. And then there's the heaven of today, which is in some other spatial area where God is fully and his will is being done as it always should be done. So when someone says, where is heaven? You gotta go, well, right now, it's wherever the presence of the Lord is. I always love to tell people this too, Randy, because when you think about people calling Israel the Holy Land, like when they go over there, like it's some special place yeah. even today. And I try to tell people, man, the Holy Land is wherever God's people are. Yes. And so today, in a sense, this is holy ground because we have an intimate abiding relationship with God. And, and one day it'll be over all the earth. In the millennial reign, Jesus will be here. But um, anything else that you would say is a common misunderstanding about heaven that you would just inject in this question as you were sharing with people about how will we be, uh, even how Jesus says, I guess, it's better for you that I go, that the Holy Spirit might come, so there can all be that intimacy that you have disciples with me right now, with the Spirit of God dwelling in me. What would you say to people, go, how can I be near God if he's fully incarnate in Jesus? Mm. Does that make sense? In heaven, sure. what a waiting line there will be right. to get near the King of Kings. How will we be near God when there's hopefully millions, if not billions of people who've been redeemed in eternal heaven. How would you answer that? I think in the same way that the physical resurrected Christ can be right now in one location in heaven, and yet he indwells us. Mm -hmm. So I think that indwelling of Christ will not disappear once we are in heaven. There would be all the more reason for him to indwell us. So then as we go about our everyday lives that includes serving him, uh, you know, we're, we're told in Revelation 22 that his servants will serve him. Servants have things to do, places to go, people to see. And that's in the eternal state, right? In the eternal state, and we yeah. will reign with Christ. That's a huge part of living forever with Jesus is that we will have dominion over the earth, just as he intended Adam and Eve to do it. And so we've had two people in 
history who successfully, for apparently a short period of time, That's ruled the earth to the glory of God. Well, did Satan thwart God's plan that human beings should rule the earth to the glory of God? No. Mm. The redemptive work of Christ is not just to save souls, disembodied spirits, so that they might live out in the universe somewhere uh, with the angels, but that they might live as resurrected beings ruling the earth, having dominion to the glory of God. And that's one of the huge misconceptions because people, even when sometimes when we talk with our children and grandchildren, we're giving them the impression that heaven, where we'll live with Christ for eternity, is some disembodied state. When scripture emphasizes the resurrection, not just 1 Corinthians 15, but many passages that emphasize the physical nature of the resurrection. No kid wants to grow up to be a ghost. You know, a ghostly eternal existence is not appealing to people. And ironically, if the Bible taught it, we should teach it, whether it's appealing to people or not. But amazingly, the Bible teaches something that's far more appealing that we will eat and drink and live with Jesus and have banquets and do things and enjoy nature forever and ever. That's going to be amazing. And the trick now, not a trick, but the spiritual discipline is for us to live and enjoy him even now until we see him face to face and fully know as we're fully known. That's what we're hoping that Real Truth Real Quick does is it encourages you to go to God's word, learn more of him, see how we can enjoy him right now. And while we even wait and long for that day when we'll enjoy him together forever. Thanks, Randy. Enjoy us next time as we talk some more on Real Truth Real Quick about life, leadership, and the world we live in, and the world we're going to get to enjoy with God forever. Mm -hmm.